In this section, we will be looking at budgets. So the first thing we want to consider then is what is a budget? Well, at the start of the year, management need to plan for what they expect to happen in the coming year. How many units of their product do they expect to sell? And what do they think the cost of producing these units is going to be? What will the costs of running the business be for the coming year? So budgeting then is part of the planning process. Put very simply, a budget is a plan in numbered format. Now, we've said that at the start of the year, management need to consider how many units of their product they expect to sell. They need to plan for what they think their costs should be. Are any of you wondering why it is important that management within a company undertake these budgeting activities? Well, there are a number of different reasons why we prepare a budget, and it might be useful for you to remember the purposes of a budget by using the, the acronym CRUMPET. The first purpose of, the, of a, the budgeting process is coordination. By this we mean coordinating the activities of all the different departments within an organization. So, if our sales budget then is that we are planning to sell a thousand units of our product, the production department needs to know that they have to produce a thousand units in order to meet the sales demand. The second purpose of the budgeting process is responsibility. So perhaps the sales manager would have responsibility for producing the sales budget. They are then also responsible for, for coordinating the activities of the sales department in order to achieve the sales target we have set at the start of the year. The next purpose of budgeting is to ensure appropriate utilisation of resources. So perhaps our purchasing manager is responsible for buying materials for our production process on behalf of the company. Now if we have not put a budget in place at the start of the year, perhaps the purchasing manager will just order materials with the most convenient supplier without any consideration of cost. However, if we have told the purchasing manager at the start of the year that they cannot spend more than five pounds per unit on materials, then we are ensuring that they will shop around for the best price or negotiate effectively with our suppliers. Linked to this is the next purpose of budgeting, which is motivation. Now, if we have set our purchasing manager a target of £5 per unit of material, and perhaps we have linked the achievement of this target to their bonus, we would expect then that our purchasing manager is very motivated to achieve that set or target price. Now we've already said that budgeting is part of the planning process and funny enough the next purpose of budgeting is planning. By having this budgeting process in place we are ensuring that the management within an organization think about what they need to achieve in the coming year and how they are going to achieve that. Budgeting can be a very useful tool in the evaluation of performance. 
So we've already said that at the start of the year, we are going to prepare our budgets and effectively we're going to be setting targets. We want to sell a certain number of units. We want our costs to stay below a certain amount. At the end of the year then, we can look at our actual results of the company and compare this to our budget and see how well the management of the company have done in achieving these targets we set at the start of the year. The final purpose of budgeting is telling. What we really mean here is that the budgeting process assists us with communication within the organisation. So it communicates to each different department what their targets for the year are and how this is linked to the activities of the other departments within the company. Now, before we get into the actual calculation of budgets, there's a few other bits and pieces of theory we need to consider. So first of all, we want to look at budget preparation procedures. So who is responsible within a company for coordinating the budgeting process? Well, this is usually the responsibility of a budget committee, which will be made up of members of senior management within the organisation. They are expected to coordinate the budgeting process throughout the different departments. They are also responsible for preparing and maintaining a budget manual. Now the budget manual is a very important part of the process because it will contain the objectives of the budgeting process, the administration procedures for how the budgets should be prepared and carried out. Effectively, it tells each manager how they need to approach preparing the budget for their department. Once the budget committee have prepared the budget manual then, this will be provided to the individual managers who are responsible for preparing the, the each department budget. This will usually be the department managers. They will prepare the cost or sales budget for their department and then they need to submit that to the budget committee for approval. So there it is, our budget preparation procedures within a company. Now, we've already mentioned a number of different types of budgets that will exist within every company. So what are the different types of budgets we would prepare? Well, broadly speaking, there are two different types of budget. The first is our functional budgets, and the second is our master budgets. Now, the functional budgets relate to each of the different areas of the company, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail later. The master budgets are our summary or high-level budgets. Before we get into the preparation of each of those two budget types though, we need to consider our starting point for the entire budgetary process. And the starting point will always be deciding what is the principal budget factor. Now the principal budget factor is very simply the factor which limits the company's activity. The budget which contains the principal budget factor must be prepared first and all of the other budgets will be built following that. For most companies, the principal budget factor will be sales demand. So generally speaking, 
companies will produce and sell as many units of their product as there are customers prepared to, prepared to buy the product. For that reason, we would usually start then with preparing our sales budget. And our sales budget will be the first functional budget we look at. Once we have prepared our sales budget, so we know how many units of our product we're planning on selling in the coming year, we can then prepare our production budget. This has to come after our sales budget because we need to know how many units of our product we're going to sell before we can work out how many units of our product we need to produce. Once we know how many units we're going to produce, we can then look at what resource do we need in order to achieve our production budget. When we're looking at the resource we're going to use, we need to consider our materials, So how much material do we need to produce our units? How much do we think this material is going to cost us? We'll also need to consider our labor resource. So how many labor hours will be required to achieve our production activity? How much will those labor hours cost the company? And they are our functional budgets. Now we've mentioned that our master budgets are our high level or summary budgets. Our master budgets can only be produced after our functional budgets have already been prepared. And our master budgets will include our cash budget, our budgeted income statement, and our budgeted statement of financial position.